You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva, and knowledge lady Mocha, representing Mocha's Cafe de Paris. Well, I'm always serve you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. Big ups to everybody. You know I, I love each and every one of you. I appreciate all you guys who've been still rocking with me, still being loyal to my channel. Appreciate all my guys and my ladies as well for still being supportive. And not only that, I appreciate you ladies who have also subscribed to my ladies only channel Mocha's Ladies Lounge. So if you want a space in which there's majority of the uh, subscribers of women and you may feel more comfortable in that type of space then you're welcome to subscribe over there but of course this is the channel where i started and where everything pretty much became my my come up my come up point was through mocha's cafe de paris and i have each and every one of y'all to thank for that so nevertheless y'all i wanted to get into this right away um it never fails coming out of clayton county y'all yes it's another officer who got caught up um in stupidity and as y'all know i am very aware of officers who get in this type of situation i myself am a former correctional officer i've been in corrections for two years and some change before i realized all of the stress and the um the snake pits that came along with that type of profession it just was not for me but nevertheless getting right into it y'all a clayton county correctional officer was arrested and fired for attempting to take contraband into the jail according to sheriff levon allen officer desiree lorry was stopped by a supervisor saturday with the contraband and then attempted to leave allen said in the news release on sunday the 27 year old from decatur was arrested and terminated Desiree Lowry exchanged her employee badge number for an inmate LE number, exchanged her officer title for an inmate title, exchanged her blue uniform for an orange uniform, and exchanged her clean record for four felony charges, the sheriff's office said. It was the seventh arrest this year involving jail employees or contractors. Part of an operation Allen has dubbed Operation Clean House since being elected this year. He won a ran off a runoff election in April to replace Sheriff Victor Hill, who began serving an 18 month sentence in an Arkansas prison in May for violating the civil rights of inmates by strapping them to restraint chairs as punishment. Allen was promoted from chief deputy to interim sheriff in late December. Most recently, a jail nurse was arrested in July after she allegedly tried to smuggle contraband items, including cell phones and drugs to inmates, the sheriff's office previously said. Geraldine Moore took a plastic bag of banned items into the jail and placed it in a trash bin that inmates frequently clean, Allen said. Then Moore walked away from the bag. Investigators then seized the bag and Moore's possessions, which included um, Percocet pills, Allen said. I would rather have one good deputy than a hundred crooked ones, Allen said after Moore's arrest. I won't stop until I get every last one of them out of my agency. In June, Allen announced the arrest of two employees in consecutive days. A contractor, Ayanna Dixon, was charged with financial transaction card fraud and theft and accused of stealing an inmate's credit card and using it at Macy's. A day later, Sheriff said a fellow contractor, Soraya Alley, was arrested for allegedly aiding wanted people sharing confidential information and encouraging people to steal from inmates. She has been charged with being a party to a crime and obstructing or hindering law enforcement officers. Correctional officer Sean Hollinshed, according to Allen, was taken into custody in May for his alleged role in vicious attacks on an inmate and charged with criminal negligence and violation of his oath of office. Also in May, Officer Tabitha Clinton and Nurse Jessica Castellanos was arrested after they were accused of giving inmates prohibited items, the sheriff said. And Sunday's arrest, no details released on what Laurie was attempted to smuggle into inmates. She was charged with violating the public oath of office, giving inmates guns, drugs, or alcohol, criminal attempt, and crossing a guard line with guns, drugs, or alcohol, jail record show. Laurie was being held without bond Monday. 
So I am going to further um, add the beautiful beam footage to this content so you can also see for yourself um, how this incident transpired with this fellow correctional officer who's no longer a correctional officer who went from corrections to corruptions as now an inmate. And a Clayton County correctional officer found herself on the other side of the law this afternoon after she was accused of trying to enter the jail with contraband. Sheriff LaVon Allen says a supervisor stopped her. She was fired, then arrested Sunday. She now faces four felony charges. And this is actually the latest employee arrested in Operation You Tried It. The sheriff says since taking office, he's arrested seven employees or contractors at the sheriff's office as he works to crack down on crime inside the jail. So now uh, that y'all have viewed this beautiful bean footage of former officer Laurie, who basically got caught up in smuggling drugs, guns, and other uh, prohibited items into the facility. This is really nothing new under the sun. And even though the sheriff did, is doing a good job, doing the best to his ability of cracking down um, officers, not only officers, nurses, contractors, um, any of these individuals who work um, for the jail, rather uh, as officers or those who are contracted, like nurses and contractors, um, he's been taking all the necessary precautions in ensuring any one of these individuals who are caught violating um, these rules by bringing in contraband or bringing in other pro prohibited items for inmates are definitely going to suffer the wrath and suffer the consequences of making these poor choices. So, nevertheless, um, I want to say this. You know, I realize a lot, that there's a lot of factors that are tying, to, are tying into why. There is so much corruption and so much um, officers that are falling into the attractments of inmates' manipulation. Well... The biggest thing is, truth be told, a lot of these jails and prisons, they don't got desperate for staff. The majority of these prisons, I know in the state of Georgia, you know, I don't have time to check out every prison facility or correctional institution in every state. So just to keep it narrowed down, um, Jonesboro, by the way, that's where Clayton County um, Jail is, where the officer got caught smuggling the contraband, for those of you who wanted to know. So, um, this is one of the biggest problems, is that there is such a huge, significant amount of staff shortage in these jails, and worse, in these prisons. Anybody who's interested in corrections, thinking about corrections, because it's very tempting to... Um, be interested in employing uh, in, in, in uh, basically seeking this type of profession because right now a lot of these jails and prisons have gotten really desperate. They are trying to lure in new hires um, by the pay raise which may not seem like a lot to y'all but you got to realize a person that's used to making um, $10, $12 an hour 18 to 20 dollars is a lot and we know um 18 to 20 dollars a month uh, uh, a hour is not enough for anybody who is a, 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 a correctional officer because it's a very dangerous profession and your life is on the line every day however people who are used to getting paid less that is a lot of money keep in mind too you have a lot of people who live in the outstretch you know of the suburbs outstretch in the country and in most, in most cases, um, in these outstretches, most people can only get work through a correctional institution or facility within that area. Most prisons, especially prisons compared to jails, jails are some most of the time within the city limits. But when it comes to these prisons, they are stretched out in little country bumpkin, one-stop light, one-stop sign towns. Um, you know where there's only that one convenience store, that one gas station. As close as you're going to get to entertainment is, you know, uh, when you go to church on Sundays, you know. I mean, or when the county fair, you know, um, comes in town once a year. You know what I mean? Anybody who lives in these little country pumpkin towns, these little redneck towns, you know, 
Um, it's not a lot that goes on there. And uh, fortunately, um, there's not a lot of opportunities. The opportunities are very limited. But there's always a prison that's paying the most. So you have a lot of people who live in these country bunker towns who are willing to commute and drive another 35 to 45 minutes to an hour, thankfully, several days out of the week, just so they can go work in these jails or these correctional institutions that are paying 20 to 25 $30 an hour. And believe it or not, if it's paying $25, $30 an hour, you must be really don't ranked up fast because the average officer pay starts off at 18 and some are 16, especially if it's a really small uh, correctional institution and you've never done this type of work before ever, they're going to basically jinx you and probably start you off at 15, 16 an hour. And of course, you know, they present you with this beautiful package of all the benefits, the health care, uh, and, um, um, you know, all of the, the, the 401k plan and all of these other wonderful benefits that sound so extravagant. But what they don't tell you is, um, a lot of these benefits, um, still require you to have to contribute. They're not for free. So even if you get the best of health care, you still got to come out your pocket for your medicine, um, for your doctor visits and appointments. But nevertheless, we're not going to go into all of that. But y'all get my drift in. Um, the majority of my subscribers are pretty well put together. Y'all are not too slow. So y'all y'all get my drift. I ain't got to go into that too deeply. But nevertheless, these jails done got desperate, y'all. Uh, they are hiring any and everybody to the point to now where I know the jail where I used to work, um, the hiring age requirement was you have to be 21. Well, because the last couple of years have gotten worse since I left there, more officers have left. So now they've gotten so desperate, y'all, they have decreased the age to 18, which is definitely not a good idea. And that is what's going on. Um, a lot of these prisons and jails, they are decreasing the age limit. And that is one of the biggest factors that are um, causing a lot of officers, rookies who don't know the system, who lack awareness when it comes to manipulation, inmate manipulation and intimidation. These are usually the, the, the prime candidates that the inmates like to target. Um, these inmates like to groom officers that are young, inexperienced, especially females. And make no mistake about it, the men get got too, especially the young males, because you have to realize you're hiring an officer under the age of 25, nine times out of 10, his peers. If he was born and raised in that same area, he's going to run his cousins, family, his peers. Same thing with women. You know, if she was born and raised there or went to school there, she's going to run into people her age, people she went to school with. So I always tell anybody, if you're going to go into law enforcement, do not go, do not um, work in an area in which you live, eat, sleep, and breathe there. You know, you may have to deal with some retaliation. You may run back into these individuals. Or you're going to know them, and if they know anything personally about you, um, and here it is now, they're you're running into you in a correctional facility. As soon as they can't get their way, they're letting other inmates know your history or current things about you. Well, yeah, she thinks she this, this, and that, but back in middle school, she let all these dudes run a train on her, and now she thinks she top-notch this, this, and that. So if you got a pass, and it wasn't a good one, um, all of that could be used against you. Or if you dated multiple guys within that area but that is one of the biggest problems uh, a lot of these jails i'm gonna just say the correctional institutions that way jails prisons is all the same but then it's different and we'll go into talking about that another time but that's the biggest problem man a lot of these jails don't got thirsty you know they're not thoroughly checking um you know not only these uh these new hires they think because their record is clean, they think because this individual um, has never been in prison, never been in jail, there, there's nothing um, major in this person's criminal history that would uh, dictate if they would be a good fit as a correctional officer. But what these jails are not doing is they're not checking out the mental psyche. Now, don't get me wrong, doing the... Uh, the, the hiring process, they do take you to see a psychologist. They do take you to meet with a, a, thera a therapist and all of that. But 
they don't really ask you the right questions. They only ask you things about your childhood and uh, just, you know, uh, mediocre information. They ask you just enough to make sure you're not too damn crazy or you're not too, um, you know, mentally damaged to where you wouldn't even, where you would not be a good fit to perform this type of work. But the biggest thing is when they uh, are in the hiring process when it comes to these young people, what they should have been doing is not only checking them out as far as mentally, but these new hires should be um, given an, an inmate intimidation and manipulation course, especially these new hires. Again, the criminal justice system has gotten so thirsty for officers. They're not checking out these young people. They're not only that, they're not giving them the information, the right strategies, the right tools. They're not giving them enough knowledge to be able to identify when an inmate is trying to bait them in and manipulate them. Now, don't get me wrong, the last count, county jail in which I was a correctional officer, they would give you a sample of information. They would tell you, you know, don't give the inmates no food. They would tell you don't give the inmates you know, none of your personal information. Don't let them know where you live at. whoop de doo But what about these inmates, you know, who know how to smooth talk these females? Why, why are they not, why do they specifically not have an additional training for young male officers and female officers? They need a lot more thorough additional training and being able to know how to conduct themselves when the inmate is trying them. I really don't think that these jails take that very seriously because the truth of the matter is intimidation starts off with conversation and relation. These inmates are very smart. They can, they can look at a person and size them up and tell that they are a sucker. They can tell if a female is attention starved. They can tell when they're dealing with a young man that, that still um, has yet to transition into manhood so they can buddy buddy him, make him his homeboy, you know, getting in his ear some stuff, man. Why, why you letting a white man tell you what to do? You know, why you let, why you working for these saltine crackers whoop de woo why you working for these uncle tom ninjas you know know how these uh, a lot of these you know uh, uh goons do when they know they can smell um the the lack of knowledge and, and the lack of courage on a lot of these young um officers especially young black officers young male officers when i was a gto a jail training officer I would make that very clear anytime I had to train a young black male that was under the age of 25. I had to make this clear to them that, look, listen, you're a young black man. You're, the majority of these inmates are young black males that are within your age group. They're going to talk to you as if you are a homeboy. They're going to talk to you as if y'all are on the same level. And yes, age-wise, y'all are on the same level, but when it comes to authority, young man, you cannot allow these young dudes getting in your head, making you feel like you're not cool enough because you're doing your job, or you're not man enough because you're doing what your sergeant or your lieutenant tells you to do. So they're going to try to mentally penetrate your mind and make you feel like you a punk, you soft because you're uh, uh you're you're taking authority which is your job from your higher ups. So I would tell um a lot of these young men who were starting out in this profession for the very first time to be cautious of not becoming a homeboy. Okay? You cannot build a bond with these dudes. You cannot build a friendship or a homeboy or, or a, a homeboy. That's an old word. I don't know what they call each other now, but um, you get my drift. You can't be building no type of brotherly love. And um, unfortunately, in many cases, you know, the training eventually goes out the door and it's always one inmate who is smart enough to conquer. You know, they, they may, you know, uh, be smart about it, you know, with a few and put their foot down, but it's going to always be that one that's going to know how to break them like an egg, you know, and, and know how to make them feel comfortable. 
all inmates do not come at you in a hostile manner in which you feel uncomfortable. Um, it's easier to, you know, shun and not get caught up with the inmates that are overly aggressive. But you have the passive aggressive inmates that are very polite, speak to you every morning, know how to talk to you with respect. And guess what? He is just as grimy and shady as the inmate who is loud, aggressive, and calling you out your name and being disrespectful. In fact, the smooth-talking inmate, he's worse because he acts like he respects your job. He acts like he respects you as a person. And it's all just bait and game to get you comfortable and let your guard down. And the same thing with the women, but it is worse. Now, I looked up this young lady's Facebook page. I could tell she's in a relationship. Um, former Officer Laurie. Um, outside of the jail, you could tell she was a girlfriend. She had kids. And for whatever reason, none of that mattered to her when she allowed these inmates to start getting into her mind. Now, the, 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 the information is still pretty vague. We don't know how many inmates it is. If it's just one inmate who she brought in gun and drugs for or if it's been multiple inmates. I'm assuming more than one, uh, being that they gave her four different charges, all could mean that she committed four different felonies with that one inmate. Now, if it was a, if she produced drugs, that's one charge. Gun, that's another charge. Um, entering um, guard lines with the uh, with the items, that's another charge. Then you have the um, dishonor of oath. You know, meaning that when you decided uh, to take this job as an officer, you had to. Put your hands and read the oath um, before your fellow officers and the sheriff that um, you were going to honor your job, whatever the oath is, uh, you know, um, be within your professional guidelines and not step outside of that. Nevertheless, um, a lot of these inmates, they, they, they are very smart. You know, um, and the problem is the problem with a lot of these officers, they think because they have a badge and they think because they have this authority that, um, they automatically got to one up and I don't care what your authority is. You still got to be careful with how you handle yourself and how you carry yourself with these inmates, because if they get into your head strong enough, um, they can use your authority to their advantage. To the point to where they will be running you versus you running them with the authority. Um, so, like I said, th this young lady with all of these felony charges, it could have been multiple inmates or all of it could have been with one inmate. Um, these inmates, especially when it comes to women. First of all, I always recommended this. If you are a woman that's having problems at home. If your marriage is not in a good space, if your relationship is not in a good space, if you're lonely, you don't have a male companion, companion, you don't have a male friend, you have to realize you're around at least 60 to 70 of these men several times throughout the day. You're spending time with 60, 65 to 70 grown men, all of different colors, all of different ages, all have different personalities. You got some inmates that are very, very polite. They see that you're struggling, um, you know, trying to bring in some trays for child, and they'll come to your aid without you asking or, or, or begging them to. Um, they know how to be polite. They speak to you every morning. They seem very concerned. They ask you, how's your day? How you doing this morning? What you ate last night? And then you have some inmates that are just assholes. You could say good morning. They won't say it back. Um, they could see you struggling with something and, and, and you trying to tow the box or something. And like, Shh, man, Shh, I, ain't her, I ain't her, man. What the hell am I going to ask her if she need my help for? Um, so you're dealing with all these different type of guys, you know. But I will say this. I will say most inmates are cool, calm, and collective. You will get your share of hotheads. Most of the guys are cool. They are they are polite and they are nice. However, as a woman, if you struggle with a weakness when it comes to 
to the opposite sex, you will find yourself crossing a line in which you should not be crossing. And it does not take much. Most of the time when they assign you to a unit, you're going to be in that same unit for the majority of your duration there. And, you know, unless where I was, you know, it was always, you know, officers quitting and getting terminated for stupid stuff and some major stuff. And they would have to keep moving you around to keep the whole jail balanced with enough of staff. So all the inmates are being supervised and monitored. And I hated that. I hated it with a passion of being taken out my unit, especially when I got my inmates trained a certain way and I done found my zone within that unit for them to uproot you and take you out your unit and take you to a whole other unit where you got to relearn all the inmates. They got to relearn you. And some units, they would let their inmates get away with more than others. If you're used to a, a unit that's very structured, and here it is, they snatch you out the structured unit and putting you in another unit in which there's no structure, there's no routine, there's no uh, um, um, stability, you can really be taken out your element and get frustrated very easily. And this happens a lot. The most, the longest I ever stayed in the unit was probably four months, four or five months, and then they snatched me out and put me somewhere else. This is very frustrating. If you're the kind of person you don't like change all the time, you want to be in your same station, dealing with your same customers, dealing with your same manager, this is something you might want to think twice about going into. Um, not only that, they, they change your sergeants and lieutenants a lot. That was very nerve-wracking. You got some sergeants that are cool as hell. They do their job and they look out for you. They see you stressed out. They, they try to do any and everything they can to try to help you, you know, because you are a help to them. They see you stressed out and overwhelmed. They'll step in the wing and, you know, take over for, for about an hour just so you can kind of mentally get your mind together. But that's rarely. Most of them do not give a flying you-know-what. They could see you struggling, see you overwhelmed, see you being tried, and they will not relieve you. Because a lot of these higher-ups, they have already done the type of work that you have done. And they don't want to go back to starting from the bottom. They got their position, they got their badge, they got their high rank now. They too good to come in the wing and help an officer pass out trades. They too good to come in the wing and see an officer is, is, is struggling and several things got to be done and they won't come in and, and help you know do some of the security checks or anything to try to alleviate you you got some of like shit i'm here I'm, I'm here for my check i'm already a sergeant i'm a lieutenant now i ain't got to help you do shit i'm a captain now i don't know what to tell you you better figure it out but a lot of these inmates know that um they know that is it's a lot of shortage in staff they are smart they know it because the same officer is coming in too frequently. You know, it doesn't take much to figure out, you know, uh, this is the fifth time in one week. You, 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 the only officer that, you know, keeps coming in. Evidently, they short staffed. Um, they just pick up on things. But the main thing is they could pick up on a uh, officer who is not confident, who lacks knowledge, who lacks experience. Um, this female, I would say she's 27 years old, which means she's definitely a full-grown woman. But evidently, somewhere, um, the elevator doesn't go all the way up. It's not making all the stops correctly because that's how she got infiltrated. Um, a lot of these inmates, they will sit up here and it starts off simple and small. It's simple, innocent conversation. Good morning. How you doing? It's brief talk. Then over time, they go from asking... Um, what was you doing before you worked here? How long you been doing this? Um, next thing you know, it gets a little personal. Then they'll go from, are you married? Do you have kids? Um, how long you been married? You know, what does your husband do? I, and, you know, um, it's hard. When you first start off as a correctional officer, they'll tell you, don't have no conversation with no inmates, period. Don't tell them nothing. Don't speak to them. And I'm like, there's no way in, a, in rat's ass you're going to be around all of these men and you don't talk to them. You don't conversate with them. For one, when you tighten the ass and you rigid like that, 
Um, it makes it very uncomfortable to work, especially if you got to do 12 to 16 hours, which is most of the time, especially these day and age. And, um, you know, if you're uh, an easygoing person like me, that's just not your character. They just not talk to people and not have a conversation, you know, that's just not in your character. But you have to be wise as far as not being direct. You know, the inmates knew I was married. Did they know my husband's name? No. Did they know what he did for a living? No. Did they know where he was born and raised? Absolutely not. Inmates knew that I had a daughter. Um, other than that, they did not know what she looked like. I didn't bring any pictures or photos or anything in showing what she looked like. I didn't say what school she graduated from. Um, I was very, very um, basic with my answers. You know, I did not give them anything direct to go on. Um, unfortunately, the inexperienced officer or the lonely officer um, the attention seeking officer is going to overly share a lot of personal information and women are perfect candidates at doing that um, I don't think the male officers are as bad but when it comes to the opposite sex because by nature you know women when we go out we mingle we go to the clubs well I don't do the clubs like I used to since I've been married but when we go out and we and we go into these events where we know the opposite opposite sex is going to be that's just in our nature for women to talk to men and men to talk to women. But a lot of women don't understand this type of profession. You cannot get too casual. These are inmates. These are not guys that you don't met at the bar. This is not a social gathering. Um, this is not um, a casual wine and dine. These are inmates. You cannot give them anything specific to go off of. But nine times out of ten for this female officer to get to this point, that's where it started from. She let the inmate know a good bit, which gave him the advantage in being able to infiltrate. Um, sometimes, you know, just basic conversation. You don't think you're saying nothing bad, but they're taking it and they're using that information to advantage. You can be just a simple conversation like, man, my check was short this week. You know, I was only able to pay my water bill, but it's all good. You know, I, I'm going to put in some more hours. And all the things that it made to be like, what? As much as you work here, as many days as I see you working here, you mean to tell me you didn't have enough money that you only could pay your light bill or water bill? Man, shoot. I, I Man, I know. I, I mean, if you want, I got a hookup now. Well, you can be making what you getting here triple. Well, you can. I, I have a connect to where... You could pay the light bill, water bill, gas bill, every bill. But, you know, you will have to look out for me. But if you're struggling like that, you know, I got something you can do. You know what I'm saying? On the outs, you know, I got, I got, I know people. Uh, nah, I don't feel, nah, I don't feel comfortable with that. I ain't about to risk my job and lose my job over you connecting me with somebody. You know, I, that's, that's bringing nothing but heat. Man, you man, it's nothing like that, man. You know, at the end of the day, these people don't care about you. They got you working like a slave. You know, they got you busting your behind, working all these hours, and you only bring home X, X, X amount. You know what I'm saying? You know, these people don't care about you. If you die today, they'll put another officer in to take your place. You just another body up in here. You could be making money here and still making money on the outside. I ain't saying you got to quit what you're doing. I ain't saying you got to leave this job, but I know people who know people that can look out for you and give you extra something on the side while you working here. You ain't got to do nothing major. They, they make it sound small, you know. You ain't got to do nothing major. All you got to do is bring in some cigarettes, bring in some cell phones. It's just a one-time thing. You do that one time, you know what I mean? I'm good, you know. You don't owe me no more favors. But if you look out, and do this, I can fix it to where I can have money in your bank account as soon as you get off. All I got to do is make a call on my PayPal. I know somebody right now. He'll hit you off $500 if you just do this one thing. He'll hit you off $800 if you just do this one thing. Just the one time. They always assure you, because inmates are smart. They know they can't sit up there and tell you, once you do this for me, I'm going to always need you to do it. Because they know once they put that out there that you're going to feel overly obligated. So some of these guys are smart. They're like, man, it's just the one time. You know what I mean? Just just this one drop. 
There's one drop, that's extra money in your pockets on top of the checks that the county already paying you. You know, I could pay you every week. I can I can get you if you if you do this one favor and if you if you feel like this is something you want to keep doing, I can get you paid every week. Versus here, you got to wait every two weeks. So against your better judgment, you think about it, you think about it. You already made the first mistake by letting them know you're struggling. Secondly, now you're thinking about it. When you get home and you see all these bills and stuff piled up on the table, it got you thinking and reflecting on what that inmate told you. Man, all this money, I got this, I got that going on. Kids whining about, they need this for football practice. She needs this for her ballerina recital. You got all this going on, especially if you're a single woman. But in this instance, this woman was not single. But nevertheless, financially, either there was a financial struggle that made her feel propelled to do this or something as simple as she just really started bonding with this inmate, which is a very, very delicate and serious chance that you take as an officer. So let's say, like I said, one factor could be inmate know you struggling and know you need the money. Staying on that, you do it one time thinking that's going to be it. You're looking at the instant gratification that they deposited that $800 into your, your cash app. Because at this point, you know, you ain't feeling comfortable giving them your bank account information. So the fact that you saw this inmate went through with what he said, you feel secure with this inmate. You feel secure with this connect. Now you're getting paid by the county every two weeks. And then on top of that, you done made this drop. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. But this is the problem because of that one time favor and because you already done crossed that line and um, made this deal happen where they was able to deposit that money to your cash app or to your debit to your prepaid however whatever 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 now they can use that to their advantage so here comes Mr. Smooth, inmate, inmate snake. Inmate snake is now coming at you again. And the chances of you being able to deny him, you're not going to be able to do that now because he's going to hang it over your head. Well, you done already crossed that line. You done already looked out for me at this point. I mean, it wasn't like I didn't come through. You saw I sent you the money. But um, I'm going to need you to do another bid for me. Another What you mean? I already looked out. You said this was a one-time thing. You know, I don't want to jeopardize my job. That was supposed to be a one-time thing. You're trying to make this constant and consistent. You're trying to make this an ongoing uh, obligation. And I'm, I'm not in a position to do that. I'm compromising my job. Here come M.A. Snake. But uh, Shorty, you done already did that. You think, you think now if these crackers knew you just did it, and I'm just saying because it's how they talk, um, you, think these, these, you think the white man care if you did it once or twice? You think that's going to help you save your job because you only did it once? You done already started it now. You might as well continue to keep doing it because they, 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 they could find out that you done already looked out for me already. One time, two times, or three, it, it's, you don't already jeopardize your job as far as I'm concerned. And if you don't look out this time, I'm going to let them know that you don't already did a favor for me. What you mean? You know, I, I, how, how you figure, oh, so you're trying to blackmail me now? No, nah, shorty, you blackmailed yourself. I asked you. You accepted the money. I got proof from man man that he put that money into your cash out. I got people who could produce receipts that you done already looked out for me and did this favor. So my thing is this, either you gonna look out again or I'm gonna have to execute and, and let your people know cause you work for them, I don't work for them. Then let your people know, you know, who you slaving and doing all these hours for, 
And I know you need the income. Obviously, you wouldn't be here. I know you need the benefits. You got kids. You got family. So if you don't want to lose your job, I advise that you look out and you do this next solid for me. If not, I'm just going to get the people the information that I got. So either you're going to look out or, you know, uh, you're going to lose out. Because I'm going to let these people know you done already looked out for me anyway. So I have, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, the ball is in my court. Either you're going to cooperate or I'm going to have to take it to the next level. Either way, you know, you losing. So at this point, you might as well continue to keep looking out so you can at least continue to keep benefiting. Now, this puts you in a sticky situation now because they've already taught you this in training. When you first became a new hire, don't start doing favors for these inmates. That one time you do it, the ball starts rolling downhill. These jokers become relentless. Now you have invited yourself into a snake pit. You got pythons, you got anacondas, you got cobra snakes. You got these dudes now. Because the word travels fast. Because the dude who you did the favor for, he wants to run his mouth. And, and, and because of his ego, he wants to let the other inmates know all of what he got you doing. Or he may just have that one or two homeboys who he who he uh cool with in that unit and say, look, I got officer so-and-so to look out and do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I already got her in the chain, man. I got her in the chain command. Y'all better jump on board. Something y'all need. Yada, 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 yada. This the time to do it. So you already got this inmate snake one on your back who you doing these drops for. Now this nigga done got so far beside himself, he ain't even giving you the money no more. You know why? Because you can't even complain that you ain't getting paid. Who you getting, who, who can you report it to? Can you tell your sergeant, um, inmate so-and-so, I've been making these drops for him. He won't pay me. See, he, inmate snake one paid you the first time to get you to do it. But now that he done got you to do it, he don't feel like he got to pay you anymore because he knows who you who you going to report it to. Then on top of that, you can't say, well, you ain't paying me, so I'm going to stop doing it. You have already compromised your job. So at this point, he knows he does not have to pay you, period. So now you're making these drops, steadily bringing this stuff in on pins and needles, hoping you don't miss and go through the metal detector, hoping they don't do an unexpected damn um, shake down and bring the canine dogs and they smelling this stuff on you firearms anything or whatever that's what you up against now like I said you done got this ball rolling here come inmate snake number two who done found out about what you're doing for inmate snake number one he's coming to you now hey I already know you looking out whoop -de -whoop -de -woo, you know and it gets out of control I uh, had an uh, officer, Officer Johnson, I ain't going to blast her, even though it was a couple of years ago, she made um, the front news, uh, the front local news. That's what happened with her. She started entertaining the conversation of one of these guys, these individuals, and what ended up happening was she looked out for him, put something on the books for him, the next thing you notice other inmates found out and she started having to do the same thing and it got out of control you know um you you can't put a piece of bread out there and think only one roach is gonna crawl on that piece of bread it's gonna be multiple roaches coming you know uh and they start to breed and quadruple and it gets out of hand you know once you feed one roach it multiplies into several roaches that you are now st stuck having to deal with feeding off of you. You know what I mean? So that's probably, I'm sure most likely that's what happened um, with this officer. She looked out and she probably got away with it the first one or two times. But 
after a while, you, you cannot work in these type of facilities and people are not catching on to what you're doing. Um, it's too many snakes and it's too many eyes. For one, you got other inmates who are snitches who will report other officers. For one, they jealous, they hating on the fact that you're looking out for this off that for this inmate and they wish they indeed could have you look out for them. Or maybe they approached you and you denied them. So you have to deal with other inmates that will snitch. Um, inmates only honor no snitching when it comes to other inmates. They don't put officers in that same bracket. They will snitch and throw an officer under the bus. Not only that, you got other officers who also micromanage. And one thing about a lot of these correctional facilities, they really don't get a lot of pleasure in busting inmates, believe it or not. I know a lot of inmates think that. I know a lot of inmates think that officers get their jollies off and busting other inmates, which is true to a degree. But let me tell you what it, how it works. Officers busting inmates is like busting guppies when they rather bust a shark, which is an officer. Most of these correctional facilities, they want to earn their brownie points not by, not by just catching inmates in violation, but it's a big Nobel Peace Prize if you can catch another officer doing something unethical. A lot of officers get off on exposing other officers. I know a lot of y'all don't want to believe this. Y'all don't even want to believe it. Like, no, these officers, they stick together. They are a team. They always, you know, they family. They be coming together to burn the inmates. They be working together to catch the inmates. That's like, you know, 40% of it, but the other 60 or 70%, they love to catch other officers in violation. No, nothing makes an officer's day by catching another officer doing something wrong. That That is a, a badge of honor for them. If they can catch another officer who is being conned by another inmate, because believe it or not, an uh, uh, unethical officer it becomes a plague to the whole facility. The uh, unethical officer becomes a disease to the whole facility. Okay, because when that officer um, brought in that contraband, that gun, them drugs, or whatever else she brought in, she jeopardized the safety of all her co-workers. While it may seem fun that this officer got busted and got caught, by bringing in this contraband, the, the, the harsh reality is she put several other officers in jeopardy over financial struggles or being digmatized. And that's dangerous because if the if, uh, inmate would have got a gun, he could have used it against her or her fellow officers who had nothing to do with her slow, simple ass who got baited by the inmate snake. Because that's all they are. Inmates are snakes. And staff members are too. But we're going to save that for another day. In this case, we're going to stick to the story. Um, not only that, if it wasn't a financial struggle, the, the, the officer caught feelings for the inmate. Again, you're around these men a lot. And if you work the same unit, you're going to run into the same faces all the time. You build a familial team. You become very familiar with one another. They, they know what kind of foods you like. They see you bringing in the same food a lot. They see you bringing in food from the same restaurant a lot. You know, um, they notice. They know what kind of movies you like. Maybe y'all had a little conversation where you told them what movie you watched the other night. Um, even if you don't tell them stuff, they can just pick up on things. You wear the same color lipstick every day. They notice you always wearing burgundy. They notice your nails are colored burgundy. Oh, burgundy must be your favorite color. You a burgundy girl. Um, a lot of these inmates, they pay attention to stuff that your own husband, that your own companion does not notice. They notice when your hair is done different. They notice when your nails are done different. Um, they notice different things. They're very detailed. And for a lot of women, they get turned on by that. But my thing is, no female officer should be getting turned on by an inmate simply because he notices the small, simple things that... Um, that that um other that that your man at home may not notice. Not to realize 
He has all day to notice you and study you because he's around you for 12 to 12 to 14 to 16 hours. You know, you you're you're more you're at you're more around inmates than you are your own husband. That's another thing about this job. It's not a regular 9 to 5. You will not do 8 hours. Don't let them lie and tell you that. They don't have enough staff for you to only do 8 hours. It's never going to happen. Um, on that note, being a woman... It's by nature that you are attracted to the opposite sex. You're going to see men of all colors and all sorts of assorted flavors in these facilities. You're going to see light-skinned men, brown-skinned men, dark-skinned men, men that are well-built, men that um, are well-groomed, not all inmates walk around funky, sour, smelling like a bag of funyan rings. Okay, some a lot of these inmates are very well groomed. Um, they know how to make themselves smell good, look good without having access to the outside world. No, they cannot wear a polo cologne. No, they cannot dress in, in polo shirts and and be all decked out. But um, a lot of these guys, you know. Um, they still have, they, they're very, very, um, they take pride, that's the word I'm saying. They take pride in their grooming. They know how to come around female officers and smell good. They know how to go and get their shaves, I think once every two weeks or something. You know, they get groomed, they have a barber that comes in and cuts their hair. These guys know how to look good on the inside. Um, the only reason I, I never fell into that type of level of temptation was because, one, I was married. I am married, and I, I did not want to deal with that humiliation of losing my job and being on the news and my husband and his family and my family finding that out. I, I, I couldn't, I would not be able to deal with that level of humiliation. Secondly, um, the reality is I know he I always kept in my mind this is an inmate there's no future if I wanted to take it there at the end of the day the, the consequences are going to outweigh the benefits yeah the, yeah the, what, for what you know lose my job over what an inmate because he smells good because he's saying nice things to me because he's complimenting me should I can go to the club and get that you know what I mean so um, not all women are very headstrong like that. And maybe because I had a companion, but that doesn't always matter. And this lady, she had a companion. He's all over her Facebook page. And yet still, you know, um, she was tempted by another inmate. You know, um, having a man or being married doesn't mean you're less exempt from falling into temptation. Um, especially if you're not in good terms with your husband, good terms with your companion. Um, I think for the most part, my husband knew what type of profession I was in. So he made sure to never lack in that area of complimenting me. He made sure to never lack in that area of us still being intimate. I was not lacking in anything at home to where I needed these inmates to fulfill and to fulfill me. And, um, you know, give me the, the satisfaction or self-esteem, whatever, um, that I, I could have potentially been missing. I never was lacking anything in my own personal home life. Um, a lot of women get infiltrated by inmates because they're lacking something personally, lacking something spiritually, and lacking something sexually. Fortunately, I didn't have any areas in that department. Um, to where I was easily able to be lured. Not to say that I'm so perfect and I can't get got. Anybody can get got. Um, you can get got just by intellectual. A man know how to talk and hold a conversation. He ain't got to take you to bed to stimulate you. You know what I mean? So there's more than one way to get got. Um, I just was fortunate I never fell into that strap man. Uh, my issue was more so with the staff members. Uh, the fact that 
um, I would not comply with a lot of the ridiculous extra things they wanted me to do because they was too lazy to do it. You get these lieutenants, these sergeants, these majors. Now that they got badge and high rank, they get stank on you. And um, they rank up and, you know, they, they feel like now they don't have to do absolutely nothing. And that's the reason a lot of these jails are not surviving. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of these wardens and any sheriffs coming on the news talking about we in dire need of more officers. But at the same time, you know, they aren't doing anything to encourage officers to want to stay. They give you these false uh, 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 expectations of we are a family but what they don't tell you is you're only a family as long as you are filling in and working uh, strenuous extensive shifts that's when you're family we need you to come in and do these hours to help us out other than that you're not family when they see you're getting burnt out they see you getting overwhelmed it's taking health on, on, on you mentally um, they don't feel the need to step in and intervene on that they only feel they need to step in and intervene in which they need extra help. So the we are family, all of that is garbage when it comes to these correctional facilities. Um, the staff is no better than the inmates. They are going to look out for themselves. Um, if they see you doing anything inappropriate with an inmate, they're not going to pull you aside and say, look here, I'm noticing you're getting a little too comfortable. You're getting a little close with inmate Johnson. Listen. I know you like this guy, but you're going to have to get some strong reality check. You hanging around him a lot. You always at his cell. I haven't told anybody this, but sis, you need to come from up under him or either go to another unit because you're getting way too comfortable. Um, you're around him too much. I feel like you're crossing a certain line. I'd rather talk to you about this, so give you time to straighten this out before something happens. A lot of these officers are not going to do that. They want to earn brownie points with the higher-ups. They will throw you up under the bus if they see you doing something inappropriate. And what they do is they watch you and study you for a long time. They're not just going to go on the first thing um, an officer reports about you. They're going to go on camera, study how often you are to his cell. Study if you're pushing something through the door, pushing something under the door. Study to see if you sliding the tray to him with something you put in your hand under you slit the tray they're going to study and watch you for many many months before they actually go in and and, and um interrogate you yeah and once they done built up another F F evidence here you know next thing you know you're getting called in by the eternal affairs who investigate specifically officers and they're going down the line we seen on the 20th you was at inmate johnson door um for over 30 minutes to the point that where you was not doing your security checks then on um the a week later on the 15th we seen inmate so-and-so come to your desk and you gave him an item, you passed him something. They're going to have 30, 40 different things on you in which you're not going to be able to lie, deny, get around it. You know, you know you're just basically, you're done. You're pretty much done. Um, and you can't do nothing at this point but just, you know what I'm saying, just um, go and tell the truth, you know what I mean, and... Just be clean about it. I got got, you know. Um, I did cross the line. I should have not crossed. But for it, hopefully they catch you in which it was just an inappropriate conversation. It's better be terminated on the on um, note of fraternizing versus they caught you having sexual relations with this inmate. They caught you in a janitor closet. They caught y'all, you know, you, you smashing him, you know, in his cell. You know what I mean? It's, it's better... If you're going to get caught, you know, let it be for something small and not something major. It's better not to be caught at all. If you feeling like you already have feelings for this person or you cross the point of your return, you might as well go ahead and quit. Don't even put in two weeks. Put in your badge, turn in, your, turn in all your information and just shut it down from there. That way you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to deal with it. You know what I mean? It's just over. It's done eventually but if they find out you don't cross that line and they got evidence they can still come back and arrest you um i've seen it happen i've seen women who left the job knowing they was going to get caught for doing something they had no business doing started a new job started working at another jail and they only come and take you from your new job arrest you at the new jail and still 
transport you to the jail in which you committed these violations of fraternizing and having inappropriate relations with the inmates. Um, this happens a lot. But a, a lot of these jails, the problem is they are overworking, underpaying. Um, officers are getting desperate. They're not making, they're, ma they're, they're making a lot of hours, but not making a lot of money. The more money you make, the more taxes Uncle Sam takes. Unless you got kids, you're not going to get back half uh, how much you uh, don't work throughout the year. Most of that is going to Uncle Sam. Um, a lot of these jails, they cannot keep enough officers because the staff is very crooked. Um, once you challenge those who got your superiors and you call them out on the BS, you catch them doing. Unless you're part of the buddy system, they're in an alliance together. They're going to stick together. Um, even if you are in the right, there are strength in numbers. Um, they'll all come together and work together to get you removed from the facility. You know, um, just because you're challenging or you got some information on a, a officer with superiority doing some corrupted deeds towards you. At the end of the day, they're going to keep um, people who they feel hold more value to that jail. If you are a rookie or you somebody who are not, you're not, your officer that's not part of the alliance, um, they don't have a problem exterminating you and terminating you and getting rid of you. And yes, these are the same um, jails who stay short, who say they don't have enough officers. They cannot keep enough staff, and they don't know why. They know why. Um, it's just that at the end of the day, you got to be dirty and cutthroat to fit in. You got to be willing to fit in and play the game that they want you to play. Um, they want you to play with them, not with the inmates, though. Once you get caught crossing the line with the inmates, that's a whole nother story. And you're pretty much out of gas at that point. Um, no other correctional facility is going to hire you after um, getting caught in such a, an explosive scandal in which you made it to the news. Everybody has seen your face and recognized you. Um, not only that, it's going to go on your post record. Your post record, that is the record in which they keep specifically for officers letting you know it's a record of what the officer did at the last jail, at the last correctional facility. And if it has on your post record that you got caught smuggling in drugs or fraternizing or uh, anything unethical or unlawful, you basically, you might as well say that's a dishonorable discharge. Um, no one is going to touch you. No one is going to take a chance to hire you. I've seen it happen, though. I've seen the most corrupt officers get hired. Why? I don't know. But in some cases, it's not what you did, but who you know who's willing to uh, overlook your past, your mistakes, and still give you a second chance. If you don't have that kind of clout, you're pretty much out. You know what I mean? You're not going to get anywhere with this. So, Anyway, y'all, I'm going to get ready to shut it down, y'all. It's a lot of officers out there. You know, y'all got to be careful, man. Don't get in this profession. Um, if you know you don't have the street smarts, if you know you have self-esteem issues, if you got personal problems at home, do not apply for this type of profession. If you are in this profession and you are struggling in that area, it's better to be a help. Better go talk to somebody than to get embarrassed. Something happens, and now you want to explain yourself when you're in an orange jumpsuit and standing before the judge. It does no good then. This young lady, she's going to have a hard road to travel. Everybody has seen her face. Not only that, she has friends back at home. She has family. She has a companion. Um, she has to live with all of that. It's very embarrassing. It's so on the Internet. It's never going to go away. Um, and hopefully, mentally, she can stay sane, you know, after such public humiliation so if i had anything else on the story i would keep y'all updated but y'all be careful out there man it is your girl your diva knowledge lady mocha represent mocha's cafe de paris please make sure y'all hit that like button it only takes a few seconds it doesn't charge you anything to hit that like button i appreciate it and y'all be blessed take care